Hey there, welcome to this Halloween acrylic pumpkin painting lesson. I'm Mike Ferris. I'm going to be getting started on my 11 by 14 inch stretch canvas and my image already transferred as you can see. And I have this image available down in the description if you'd like to trace it out beforehand and a short video on how to transfer images to your canvas. So to get started on my palette, I have some permanent black, raw umber, permanent red, cad orange, yellow medium, and titanium white of course and so with my number 11 flat brush i'm going to take some of this permanent black and just kind of load it up pretty liberally and just begin to start going around the entire pumpkin for the background and i'm not going to go all the way up to the pumpkin i'm going to save that for a more finer brush but just kind of get some ground covered with this larger brush for now Okay, so now I'm going to take my number six angle brush here and I've loaded it up and it's going to help me to get these details and fine areas here with the very tip and the edge of it very well. I recommend this brush for this particular piece as the angle brush really is good at getting into small areas. And as you can see here with the tip, I can get around everything super well this way. So with the rest of this color, I'm just going to use this nice fine brush here to get the rest of the pumpkin all filled in around everything. Okay, and now without cleaning, I'm just going to take now some titanium white, same brush, and I'm looking for a mid-tone gray, something about this tone, and with that, I'm just going to block in just for the stem for now with this value. Okay, so now I'm going to block in some general dark value for the lines here. And for that, I'm going to take the same brush again, and I did not clean. I'm just going to take some raw umber, and I'm going to add a little permanent red to that. And also, let's get some cad orange, so just kind of a dark kind of mixed color like so. Just kind of contains some of the colors that are going to be involved here. And again, with the very edge of this nice angle brush, you can see I can get these very well. And so with this, I'm just going to block in this darker general value here for all of the pumpkin lines. Okay, no cleaning again. I'm going to take some cat orange now, a good scoop, and just go into that same dark value. I want to get it more oranged up, if that's a term. And down below here, as you can see, I'm just going to block in this general value like so. So with this value, I'm just going to go up onto the tooth. You can see here, I'm not going to take it all the way up. This is just to block in some general shadow color that's going to be playing here later down the road. Okay, now as you can see, I'm just going to run the paint up pretty rough and just leave it like that to make it easy to blend into at some point. So now with a clean angle brush, I'm going to take some cat orange now, straight up with no mixing. And I'm just going to block in most of the pumpkin here with this general value. And I'm going to leave some areas open to change the value in order not to get it lost within the same color. So as you can see again with that edge, 
very well with crisp lines and precision and just does such a great job. I love this brush for detailed areas and all of these fine areas to get into such as this piece and as you can see there just really easy to blend into that rough darker value that I left there on the left so again just going to go around with this and like I said leave some areas open so that I don't lose where I want a change in value so that we can tell what's going on and not have everything get lost within the same color. Okay, no cleaning. I'm going to take a little bit more cat orange, and this time I want to take some titanium white. I want to change the value up now. And to that, let's warm it up a bit with some of this yellow medium into it. So, something about this tone here. Just a slight difference. And with this, I'm going to now use this value again so that I don't get lost into the orange there with the same thing. I want a difference to show some dimension and three-dimensional realism in this kind of way to show the carving. So I'm going to hit these little guys here and then I'll start filling in the rest of the open areas with this little change in value. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going to leave a little gap here. And this is to show, or actually to preserve my lines in between, so I can show some dark value to show some texture and some dimension within the carving of the pumpkin here. So I don't want to lose those. Okay, now no cleaning. I'm going to go back into that raw umber mixture with some of that red and orange in it. And again, with those lines that I saved, I'm going to hit those now with this dark value.
Okay, with that same value, let's go with some more dark value and show some more dimension this way. So again, down on the mouth like so, just going to hit these lines in between some of the cutouts here. And also, on the tooth here, I just kind of want to bring some of that dark shadow play up on it just a little bit like so. Okay, no cleaning because black is easily able to cover up any colors. I'm just going to take some of that. And let's go into here and fill in just a little bit here on the bottom left and kind of bring it up into this little carving area. Or actually up into that little line there just a little bit. Okay, again with my angle brush, I'm just going to start making some little line details here on the stem. I'm going to take some permanent black now. And I'm going to load it up, and as I do, I'm going to wiggle it through on both sides and then pull through on both sides. And look at that nice edge it just brings to this angle brush very well this way. And with the very edge of it, I'm just going to start streaking in these lines. And as I get down here, I want to follow the curvature. And then I kind of want to curve it out because... The direction of these lines is very important to show the flow of the stem this way and to really get the three-dimensional look that it's going to have. So again, with the very nice edge of this angle brush, I'm just going to do something like this. And as I get towards the bottom, I'm going to lift the brush a little bit and use just the tip and I can get that very nice this way. So just however, it doesn't have to be exact, just lines, space them however. And of course, anything that gets out of whack, just take that gray and you can cover up anything that you don't like. Okay, now I'm going to go to my number two beat up nylon flat brush. This is excellent for streaking in colors and blending stuff down. I'm going to go with some highlights now on there. And to that, I'm going to take some titanium white, and I want just a little bit of this gray color in. I don't want to go, uh, I'm sorry, pure, pure white all at once, because then it won't uh, have that natural light and shadow play transition. So with this, just going to take the very edge and just kind of do at the top where the light's coming down on it. And I'm just going to kind of fade them down into that gray color a little bit. See, just kind of something like this, and this is really going to start to build some depth and dimension and texture on the stem this way. Okay, so gradually building it up now, I just want to get just titanium white. I'm not going to go into any of that gray color anymore, so most of that gray is off my brush, but a little bit remains, and with that, Again, as you can see right here, I'm going to make this highlight a little bit more dramatic. And in this way, it brings about a stronger look of dimension and more of a three-dimensional look this way. Okay, no cleaning. I'm going to go now into some permanent black, most of that white off my brush. And I want to go on the bottom here where it's a little bit darker. And let's get a little bit of shadow play and kind of reinforce some of these lines a little bit. So as you can see, I'm just kind of fading that up into that lighter value. And playing these colors back and forth really brings about more dramatic uh, dimension and just more realism in this way. Okay, so I cleaned off my brush. I'm getting now just pure titanium white. And I want to go back up here again. And let's really sparkle up these highlights now with this. And as always, you want to have a little light sneaking into the shadows and vice versa, because in real life, that always tends to happen. So just a little teeny bit down here, okay, it brings out more realistic uh, kind of stuff that way. Okay, and with the rest of that white on my brush, I'm going to go up here. And always, you want a light source in every painting. So this is going to be sort of an indication of how maybe there's some light that's kind of shining down out of the dark above here. And this is where... All of the highlights and, of course, all the light that's hitting the pumpkin is going to be coming from. So just going to fade this down. Okay, I'm switching brushes. This is my number four flat brush. I'm going to start putting on different values here to build texture. So I'm going to take some permanent black and raw umber together. 
And let's put a little bit of orange into that. So this kind of general dark value with the orange, it'll help to blend it in and make it look more natural. So just a little bit of paint on the brush. I just want to dance this in. And there's no direct, you know, exact way to do it. It's just the key is put just a little bit of paint at a time. You can always add more paint, but too much renders a big mess and you don't want to do that. And it's just kind of a pain to get it all off if it's too much at once. So as you can see, just kind of randomly dancing that around, not really having too much of a pattern or, you know, exact flow or anything like that. And of course I can always cover up anything I don't like. And so now in here, I want to put just a little bit where the black meets the orange. You can see there's shadow play here. It shows realism and dimension this way. And it shows the 3D effect of the pumpkin. Okay, so just however, just here and there, but not everywhere. Okay, I've cleaned my brush now, that same number four flat brush. I'm going to take now some of this permanent red. I'm going to take some cad orange into that. I'm looking for an orangey reddish color here. So red is actually a good color to use in this piece for more shadow and kind of a duller where things are not as bright, of course, and it's a little bit darker. So just again, a little bit of paint on the brush. And because these dark values can be seen so well and with the transparency of acrylic paints, I can put down this reddish orange color without covering up everything. And you can still see through this very well, all of that texture that I built up with that dark value. And in this way, this red, really gives the indication of more shadow and just more of a pop to it this way. And I'll just run that up as I bring it up and just kind of dust it up into that other orange value like so. And again, because it is a shadow color, I'm going to run some of that value on the very outskirts of the cutouts of the eyes here where the black meets that light orange. And as you can see, it builds this shadow play and it really brings out more of this 3D look and more dimension this way. Okay, and also right here in the crevices, let's go over some of that dark value that I put again, because red is kind of our shadow kind of pop color for this. It's really going to show some really cool effects. I'm just going to blend it out both sides here of the line, as you can see, just kind of blending over it. And again, very, very little paint on the brush is the key to blending it out into that orange and just kind of having it uh, have that natural shadow play kind of effect happening this way. So I'm going to make another line here and I'm going to again take that raw umber, a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, okay, that darker kind of orangey red color. And right here, just want to create another line, like I said, for another crevice. You can skip this part if you want. I just thought it would have been cool to put kind of another little deal like that. Okay, just something like that. And again, some of that orangey reddish color. And as you can see, it looks really nice for a shadow. Okay, going back into that raw umber and some of that orange. And again, tapping off a lot of that paint, just a little bit at a time. And what I want to do now is start building some little lines and just these little things like so. This is going to be the start of showing more texture and kind of these cracks and these crevices.
Okay, and with that same dark value, I'm going to take the outskirts of the cutout pieces of the mouth like so, and where the black meets the value, I'm going to just take a little bit of that color and just kind of dust over it. This again ramps up the shadow play, and it also brings out more dramatic effect for its 3D look this way. And of course that shadow play is very important as well in the nose area and also in the cutouts of the eyes as well. Okay, let's go into now with a clean brush. I'm going to take some yellow medium, just a teeny, teeny bit of cad orange. I don't want a whole lot. I want more of this kind of warmed up, kind of vibrant yellowish orange kind of hint sort of color. And right here, I want to start with this value. I don't want to go super bright all at once. I want to build a shine and kind of a glow here. So very little paint on the brush. I want it just kind of up here where the light's going to be striking the highlights of the pumpkins. This is really going to pop the 3D effect out. Okay, so I'm going to take it up and I'm going to dust it down as paint runs off the brush. It'll be very easy to kind of bring this down and over everything. And because yellow is super transparent, it's going to be just fine to go over everything I've done and not lose anything this way. And speaking of highlights, I'm going to have on the very outskirts in the front of the eye cutouts some of that color as well. And again, this is going to show a more dramatic effect on the 3D and texture and dimension. And just more realism this way as light's hitting it. So just going to apply this general orangey yellow color in its general locations where the light is going to be striking. Okay, no cleaning. I'm going to take now some titanium white. And let's see, I want to go just a teeny bit of that orangey yellow color that I made. Not a whole lot, but again, I don't want pure titanium white because I want to build this up to get that glow and that shine. And where I want it the heaviest and the brightest, I'm going to hit the paint first with there. Or I'm sorry, with that area first. And again, as paint runs off the brush, as I bring it down, it's going to be easy to blend it down into that first value that I did. Okay, so just like so, and again, very little paint on the brush at a time. Okay, and with that same value, I'm just going to hit just the edge this is really going to bring out this 3D effect and pop this really well. See just the very edges where the light's going to be glimmering off of that. And this really does something to the dimension this way. As you can see, it really pops that out of there very well.
Okay, and so without cleaning again, just a little bit more titanium white. You can see it's getting a little bit brighter each time. And again, where I want the paint the heaviest and the brightest, I'm going to apply that there first. And then again, as paint runs off the brush, I'm going to dust it down and do this method again and build this up another layer and create more shine and a dramatic effect this way. Okay, without cleaning, I'm going to go into some more yellow medium, just a teeny bit of orange again. I want that same orangey, yellowish color here. Okay, it's got a little bit more orange in it. And on the very outskirts here, I just kind of want to start before the light color and just kind of blend up, kind of sort of into it, and then kind of work it down. And this way, it sort of settles in that highlight, making everything look more natural. So see, if something's out of whack, you can just play colors back and forth. And this is what acrylics is all about. It's taking values, laying them down, and then blending into them and covering back over and building up more layers. Okay, so now let's get some more orange and yellow. I'm sorry, <laughs> orange and permanent red. And I just kind of want to hit this center kind of crevice here that got covered up. See, and again, I can rediscover and replace that back in easily. Okay, no cleaning. I'm going to take some black now and a little bit more of that permanent red mixture together. And I kind of just want to do some of these dark values around some of these drips here. And in this way, it brings those out and they show up a little bit better this way. Okay, now I'm gonna go to my script liner brush here. I'm gonna do some detailed stuff, just a little bit. I'm gonna go into some raw umber and some black. I'm going to pull through as I turn it and it brings it to a nice tip and loads the bristles very well this way. And just with the very tip, I'm just going to hit right along this first line that I did here and really bring out more detail in this way. And just going to basically run this around and do some little fine detail cracks in this way. Okay, now cleaning off that script liner brush and let's go now into some titanium white and let's get a little bit more water. Always want a lot of water on a script liner when doing fine details and crisp lines and then pulling it through as I turn it, bringing it to a nice sharp tip. And right above the first line I did, I just want to hit a highlight and this is really going to pop out the detail and just show again a little bit more dimension and realism in this way. Okay, now going back to my nylon number two beat up flat brush, I'm going to take just pure titanium white, just a little paint, and where I want it the heaviest and the brightest, let's sparkle up these highlights, and as again paint runs off the brush, I want to fade it into that glow color that I built up. I don't want to take over with all that white or I'll lose that glow and shine effect. 
So as you can see, I'm going to use my fingers and just kind of blend it out. If the paint gets a little too heavy, I can use it to do that. And it does work pretty well that way. Okay, so just going to hit these highlights with, again, just pure titanium white and fade it out into that other glow color that I built up. Alrighty, now I want to take my palette knife and I want to do something kind of cool here. I'm going to take some cad orange and let's go a little titanium white to brighten that up just a little bit. Okay, something kind of like that. And I want to take the edge of the knife here and I want to load up each side of it on the edge like so. And you can skip this step. It's up to you. I just thought this would be cool to add some kind of a splatter effect here. Okay, and I want to use the edge here to kind of do these little things. And, of course, anything I don't like, I just take that black and cover anything up to any degree. Thin the line if it's too thick or whatever I want to do or break it up. However, so this is totally super duper easy. Just get that knife and just start going to town and you can pretty much do this however you want. Okay, something like that. And now what I want to do is take my script liner brush, lots of water with titanium white, and I'm going to sign this piece right here. And again, I want to thank you so much for following along and all of your support. Don't forget to subscribe if you dig my video lessons. And let me know down in the comments how this went and any questions you have. I'll do my very best to answer anything. So as you can see, just building up some layers of color and pushing them around and just doing some blending and working a little bit with the script liner. It's pretty much an all-in-all all, uh you know, well-rounded piece to kind of experiment with a few aspects and you get pretty much a variety of different things going on. And of course, with black around everything, it's super easy to cover up anything and it's super forgiving. So definitely go for this one. And with that said, I want to wish you guys a very happy Halloween and happy fall and happy painting to you.